entering the most exciting period of soccer in this country probably ever, right? You know, we have Copa America coming 2024 this year. We have the Club World Cup coming 2025 and the World Cup coming 2026. Um, is there something that can happen in this next three-year period that would allow soccer to spike and boom to a, a top three, maybe even a top two sport in this country? Oof. What could we do? I mean, I mean, I feel like, I honestly, that's a really difficult question. I haven't really thought of anything. I mean, like, let me get your perspective on it. Let's brainstorm. Like, what do you think? Like, from now until 2026, what do you think are the biggest things that need to happen? Because I haven't even thought about it from that perspective. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. When, when I when I think about it, and I, I'll fast forward a little bit into 2026, um, because I think it's the Copa America will be big. I just don't know if, from a talent perspective, I think a lot of what has to happen has to hinge on the success of an American branded entity, which is the U S men's national team or the U S women's national team. Um, the women's national team has been the pillar of success for so many years here that I feel like we're just accustomed to it. It almost washes over us as a fan base. Uh, it's yeah. not that it's, it's almost what you, you expect. It's, it's not even a demand. It's just, it's an expectation for that team. Um, so it's, it's easy to be desensitized to it. I think in order for, um, for us to bridge that gap and start climbing up the ladder uh, in terms of competing with other mainstream sports, we would have to see similar success at the men's national team level in at least one major tournament. And so when I look, when I look at the road ahead, I don't see it for Copa America. I just think that South American national teams are built different. Mm -hmm. I think that even on our home soil, there's an opportunity to go far. Um, but I think that when it comes time to, you know, kind of put up or shut up against the, the the top five teams, so to speak. There's there's still a pretty big gap in ability. I think that the, we close that gap a little bit going into a World Cup where I, we've all seen magic. And I think a home nation um, has a strong opportunity. I think back to watching my first World Cup in 2002 when, you know, Korea made that run to the semifinals. I think there's, there's some of that opportunity. I've heard other fans say we would have to make a very deep run at a major tournament like that for – casual soccer fans or more importantly mainstream sports fans in america to take this seriously or to see more games like like the world cup final where i feel like i had friends texting me saying i didn't know soccer was like this i didn't know you know that was the craziest game i'd ever seen i had yeah. never seen storylines like that i'd never seen um, a game shift that fast in narrative like it's it's crazy. Why didn't you tell me about this? Like, dude, I've been preaching about soccer for I don't know how many years. But yeah. that, that's where my mind goes. That's be like one of those two scenarios. I just don't know if you could bank on the second one because that's probably the greatest final we'll ever see. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people feel like that's the most um, – probably like the biggest game of our lifetime. Because Could be. Because we watched Messi win the, the World Cup. And so yeah. it will be hard to ever top it. But yeah, thinking about the U.S. men's national team and um, where that could go, you know, I'm a big advocate for the U.S. men's national team to, no offense to Greg Burkhalter, but to get a different coach yeah. um, and start taking this generation a little bit more seriously um, for the U.S. women to have hired probably the best person that you could have hired in Emma Hayes. I feel like the U.S. men need to also be a little bit more serious and and bring in someone um and probably somebody that's not american as you know maybe unpopular as that may be you would automatically get more different eyes on your team if you bring in a certain type of coach and i'm not saying that you have to bring in pep but bielsa was available you know mm -hmm. um and a lot of people wouldn't have taken him because of his you know he doesn't speak a lot of english but i'm telling you this young group need somebody that can help them develop because i think we're wasting the group um for sure yeah. And um, I'm a huge advocate of those players going overseas and showing what the American players can do. Um, I get that the MLS is the league, but I feel like they do much better when they play in Europe. That, that's my personal opinion. You look at somebody like Anthony Robinson, who I feel like for a while was kind of looked at somebody that was okay. He's one of the best left backs in the Premier League. 
It's crazy. He is like it cannot be disputed. Liverpool are looking at him to replace um, Andy Robertson. He's fantastic, and it's not a blip, you know. But he wouldn't have if he did not stay at Fulham. He wouldn't be that player. I'm a huge advocate of it because it also makes people take them more serious. I know that that sounds bad because it's like, well, they should be able to play in our own league and be taken serious, but the MLS is not taken serious in Europe, you know? So I think the more of them that maybe skip over the normal route, you know, I was a little bit disappointed to see that Miles Robinson didn't take up the opportunity to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, he stayed. I think the more of them go to Europe, the more eyes are on our players and the better it looks, you know? Um, and that's a big thing. They did okay in the World Cup, you know, they in this this past World Cup. Did okay. But I think they were still a little bit disappointing considering the hype that's around some of these players, you know? Yeah. And so you make a really good point that the U.S. men are definitely something that need to be looked at in terms of bringing eyeballs and making U.S. soccer bigger. Yeah. Um, I, I think it has to be simply because I think if you expect – sports fans in general who aren't already tuning into soccer regularly to start picking up things like major league soccer or even watching any european league the prem whatever it may be to expect that to be the path i think is naive i think behavior we we, we can already see what they like what they're used to what sports they tune into we shouldn't reinvent the wheel. I think that th there is one opportunity, which I, I think we see it every every World Cup or every major tournament every couple to every four years. There are fans that come out of the woodwork that just simply want to support their country, right? Where they live, who they are. They simply just want to rep the red, white, and blue and just support their country. And if that's – that just has to be a strong opportunity for us to take advantage of. It, it, it just, yeah, it just sure. does. And if we make a deep run, who knows?